Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video we'll be going over our line position and orientation. Basically they uh, can make objects follow you and uh, they're actually really cool and uh, let's get right into it. So what a line position is, is a line position allows an object or uh, a constraint to move to another constraint. So basically make one position align with another. Uh, as it is in the name. So in this, okay, so I'm going to switch this over here. So red, let's say I want red to copy the position of this green part. What I would do is in red, I would insert a line position. A line position has quite a few properties that um, I will be going over every single one. So appearance, data, that doesn't really matter. We're all familiar with that behavior if it's enabled or not. If uh, the physics are acting on it or not. Pretty simple. Uh, we have alignment mode, which it can be a one attachment or two attachment. By default, it's two attachment. So there's two attachments down here that we can set. If it's one attachment, basically what one attachment does is one attachment makes it so... Okay, let, let me figure out how to put this. All right, so basically when mode is set to one attachment, the position that the part is going to, or the attachment is going to, will be a set position in the world space. So if this was two attachment, basically what this was saying is setting the two attachment and having these two attachments connected to each other so that when you run the game, Oh, I forgot to set this up. So basically, when you have these two attachments set up, it makes it so that this red part is moving to the attachment of this green part. So when you run the game, the red part is aligning the position to the green part. All right, so that is what two attachment is. It moves one attachment to another attachment. But if this was set to one attachment, the align position would it would align itself to the position that we give it so here down there it says position it's at the origin so this red part would align itself to the origin and you can assign that position to wherever you like and stuff like that you can do that in scripts and stuff so you can actually set the custom position there if you use one attachment Okay, so then there's apply a center mass. If this is false, so not applied, the force is applied to attachment zero, which is this attachment we have here. But if it was checked, then the force is applied at the parent center of mass, which would be the actual red part itself. Okay, so the next thing is reaction force enabled. Now, if this property is false, the constraint applies force to attachment zero, but attachment one remains unaffected. Um, and so if this was true, uh, the constraint applies force to both attachments. So basically the default is zero. So if you were to enable it and run the, oh, hold on guys, I need to, all right, so basically I just had to make it so both of these parts had can collide true, but with that property enabled, both parts are reacting to each other so that they both collide. All right, so both of these parts, they are basically, they have a positive and a negative to each other. So they are reacting to each other's attachments. Uh, so that's what that property does when it is checked. And then there's rigidity enabled. I think I'm saying that right. But when this property is false, you know, the default, um, that the physics is relying on the um, max force and max velocity down here that we set. So this is default. So when it's default, it's relying on the settings we have down here for the force. When it's checked, we don't have those options anymore. And when it's checked, the physics solver will react as soon as possible to get to complete the alignment to get from point A to point B, okay? So if I were to uncheck this, um, or I think uncheck this one, let me figure this out. 
okay, so yeah. So when this is true, this makes it so that the physics solver will react as soon as possible to get this part to the other attachment or to complete the alignment. When you run the game, the red part like immediately goes to the green part. It will go to the green part as soon as it can. So that's what that property does. So these attachments, again, you just connect the attachment from one part um, and the attachment from another part to connect them if you are using two attachments. Okay, so and then we have the force limit mode. This is set to default by magnitude and then there's also per axis uh, here. Now, when rigidity enabled, ri rigidity, that's how you say it, rigidity, is um, set to false, the, uh, you know, so when that's uh, disabled and we can use the settings here, magnitude, which is the default, the force is limited to the magnitude that is less than max force. So basically limited to max force that is less to max force per axis um this is limited to the force that we give it which is max axis force so we can change this change the force on whichever axis here and we can set um the amount of force on whichever axis that we want so and then max force is actually the 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 cap to the amount of force and velocity used on the constraint so the higher it is let's say we put in like a really big number we put in like a big number like that that is the cap of the force the constraint can use um but the actual change of this is responsiveness that we'll get into and max velocity is sent to infinity already but responsiveness um you know it's the how um so when the position changes uh when the green part's position changes it's the amount of response time that it'll update it so how quickly the constraint will reach its goal basically um so you know the higher the value of responsiveness will cause the alignment to align it faster and more rapidly and this value goes down to as low as five and the cap is 200. So if I were to set this to one, it would cap it to five. So the responsiveness, it's really low. It takes longer for it to reach its goal. If it was 200, it would reach its goal almost instantly. So I'm trying to move the part and it's like the red is following it and it's like kind of glitching out. So yeah, there's your responsiveness. Now on to align orientation. So I, I put align orientation in my red part. All these um, values, you know, the two attachment, one attachment, all the same. And then align orientation, we have our two attachment, you know, again, one attachment. But there's also these all axis align type. So when I've set these attachments and it's set to all axis, uh, oops, I forgot to make these can't collide. Okay, so the red part will update its orientation, so it's the same as the green. So I made it so that this is on the opposite axis of the red, so that it'll flip itself to make it so it's the same orientation. If I set it the green part to this orientation, play the run the game, the red part will always change. To the green part's orientation as you can see there it's updating itself but when i'm change this in a line orientation to uh look at or in, um perpendicular the red part's orientation will be perpendicular to the greens so it'll make it so it's perpendicular just like that but if we change it to parallel again parallel you know like two lines that never touch it'll be basically, if I change it to perpendicular, it'll change it to parallel, just how it was, just like that. Uh, then there's also look at, which I'm gonna have to read more on. Okay, so this one is actually really simple. This makes the red part, and makes the red part look at the 
attachment of the green part okay so when it's look at the red part see we're getting the front face uh, indic indicator well it's over there but it's making it look at the uh, attachment of the green alright so if this were to change the red part would still be looking at the green part as you can see there okay so now we have reaction torque enabled again when this is checked this will make um, both parts attachments basically uh, go in the same direction um, so it is basically like applying everything on both attachments as we can see here same thing with rigidity enabled when you have that checked it'll snap as fast as it can to this parts position as we can see here and then the last things for align orientation is the attachments that you can set to uh, however you would like um, you can change this if you set this to one attachment and you can change the target c-frame that you would like it to be and yeah guys that was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys just enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace